I would say I'm a fiscal conservative and I'm a, I'm a social liberal. Ideally, I would <laughs> like there to be freedom for people to get married how they want to get married. At the same time, I also believe that people should be allowed to keep the money they make and be allowed to reinvest it as they f see fit. All across the country, voters are demonstrating that they cannot easily be fit into the ideological boxes of past campaigns. The drama on Wall Street, the unique presidential race, and demographic shifts around the nation over the last few years have resulted in a highly complex electorate. We're beginning here in San Francisco, where, like the rest of the nation, people actually do have some shades of gray in the way they view the issues. We're traveling from the Bay Bridge in San Francisco to the George Washington Bridge in New York City, talking to voters along the way to try and peel back conventional notions of the American voting public. Uh, everybody, around the couple, okay. take a good picture. There are fewer places in this country that exist as much of a caricature as San Francisco, and in many ways, the city and its residents embrace the stereotype. But beyond the clearly liberal social policies that are seated here, the city also has a thriving business culture an aspect of the city often not included in that stereotype. I guess I would describe myself mostly as libertarian. I uh, was a very proud Republican many years ago and it's uh, really difficult to be now. I'll, I'll start with uh, Sarah Palin. She's on uh, top of mind right now. Um, I was enthralled by her speech uh, and when I come into the office, of course, in San Francisco, she's treated or it seems like a complete pariah. It's just not in the discussion in San Francisco. There's no room for her to have a positive place. No matter how politicians try to distinguish themselves, black and white, Democrat, Republican, we're all a blend of both. And to me, I believe that um, the federal government should be involved in very, in few th less things in life. But I find it very, very interesting living in a place that where most people don't really see eye to eye with me in general. And that's the great thing about California is that there's, uh, there isn't um, groupthink. Although I think that uh, most people would see San Francisco in particular as a place that does participate in group sort of uh, left, leftward thinking. Make no mistake, San Francisco will assuredly be in the Democratic column next month. But the shades of more diverse politics here are emblematic of far greater diversity and nuanced views that exist around the country. The country that the presidential candidates faced four years ago is a far different one from today. Immigration and migration patterns, a rise in young voters, dramatic shifts in the economy, and the aging of America's baby boomers have formed a different electoral map with far more states in the battleground column. In other areas of San Francisco, changes are also evident. The Mission District, for example, is one of the city's most iconic neighborhoods. But it has been undergoing a slow transformation as new businesses and more affluent residents gradually replace the traditional Latino communities. Here, catch your breath, grab some water, do what you need to do. These more affluent residents show signs of being more ideologically diverse to a point as well. I found that people make better choices than the government generally, and so I guess you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a conservative in, in that way. So within my neighborhood, I often feel like I am kind of conservative for the neighborhood because, you know, I just, um, I don't think capitalism is evil. And so tomorrow the journey begins. We will cover 12 states. We will go places where there are people who are undecided about who they're going to vote for. We will be invited, hopefully, to people's homes. We'll talk to them in shopping malls. We'll talk to them in schoolyards, we'll talk to them on the soccer field, and sometimes we'll probably just talk to them because we have to stop and get gas. And hopefully we'll also have some good meals along the way. These are Komamoni oysters. They're delicious, by the way. Please follow us on Road to November on nytimes.com and to the pages of the New York Times. I'm Jennifer Steinhauer.